All right, good morning. Welcome back to JPCB Spiritual Talk. It's Chair Campbell. So this morning, devotional, weak with those who are weak. Right? So weak with those who are weak. We're going to have a small reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. But before we get into our morning devotional study, I want to start out by asking the Lord a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord to shine to hearts of loving master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open the eyes or mind that we may understand your teachings in scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so after having conquered simple desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life. Thanking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. You Christ our God, you are light. And to you you glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. As sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. So good morning. Welcome back. So great is truly his faithfulness. Christ is in our midst. So weak with those who are weak. Right? So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. So thank you all again for following jump right right into it this morning all right so Weak with those who are weak. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made to stumble? And I do not burn with indignation. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christians do not live in isolation. When we sin, there are repercussions throughout the Christian community. When a brother or sister suffers, we are affected. Our calling is not to be solitary Christians, but to be members of the priesthood. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It was impossible for Paul to remain unmoved while there were believers in Cornet who were, who were spiritually weak. When he learned that false teachers had caused Christians in Cornet to stumble in their faith, Paul burned with indignation. Paul told the church members at Corinth to rejoice when a church member rejoices and to weep when a fellow member weeps. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. We depend on one another, and this influences everything we do. Jesus said that even when we pray, we are to begin by saying our Father, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. We must do everything with our fellow Christian in mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. It's possible to become so preoccupied with your own spiritual journey that you do not get involved in your church. You can become so focused on what God is doing in your own country that you are oblivious to the suffering and persecution that your fellow Christians face in countries around the world. If other believers around you are rejoicing or hurting and you are unaffected, you have become desensitized to the people of God. Ask God to place a burden on your heart for fellow believers. Make yourself aware of their needs. Pray for them and adjust your life to God's activity in their lives. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's another beautiful reading, another beautiful reflection. So we are not to be what? Individualists, right? Let's look a little more into some of these verses and talk about this. Let's take a deeper look here to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 22, we'll end at verse 33. So suffering for Christ is zoomed in. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant. I'm more, I am more, and labors 
more abundant in strikes above measure and prisons more frequently and deaths often. For the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked at night. And a day I have been in the deep. And the journeys often in pearls of waters and pearls of robbers and pearls of my own countrymen. And pearls of the Gentiles and pearls in the city. And pearls in the wilderness and pearls in the sea. And pearls among false brethren. And weariness and weariness and toil and sleeplessness often and hunger and thirst and fastings often and cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak? I am not weak. Who is made to stumble? And I do not burn with indignation. If I, if I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. And Damascus, the governor under a treatise, the king, was guarding the city of Damascus with a garrison desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at what Paul is saying. Here. It's a little bit of a tongue twister this morning. Let's take another look at this. So what Paul is saying. So Paul is using his opponents, right? So Paul is using his opponents to level of argument. Right? That's what he's doing. So Paul lists his Jewish and Christian credentials. If, ge if genealogy means anything, which it does to the Jews, Paul has it. Let's look at verse 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So he's covering so he's covering his genealogy, right? If Christian's experience means anything, no one can compare with him and his sufferings. Verses 23 through 27, right? He starts talking about his sufferings. His compassionate involved concern. So his compassion involved concern for his people. Verses 28. 29 besides the other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches who is weak and i am not weak who is made to stumble and i do not burn with indignation so for his compassion involved concern for his people or even his bizarre adventures so his bizarre adventures the verses 30 through 33 we we see some of his bizarre adventures, right? So what's Paul's talking about. So what is Paul saying here? We're not to be individuals. As Christians, we cannot just be about ourselves. We have a mission. And our mission involves so many out of the world. We cannot be people who lock ourselves away. No. We are to step out in this world and do the mission in which the Lord gives us. Right? And we are to pray for all those, just like Paul. Have compassion for our people, just like Paul did. We're going to boast in anything. We should boast in the cross, right? If we boast anything that we boast, it should be in the cross. Just like Paul said, if we boast anything at all, it should be in the cross. And we should live to do God's will. And we're not individuals. All right, so look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. And it says, if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So there's no such thing as an individual Christian. Being knit together in love, Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. We are called in Christ to suffer together, be honored together, 
and rejoice together. Because like it says right there in scripture, if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. So no such thing as an individual Christian. We are being knit together in love. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. We are called to Christ to suffer. And right there it says in scripture, we suffer together, be honored together, and rejoice together. So this morning's reading is telling us not to be drenched in individualism. Right? Said we should be collective, right? communal, not individualistic, but collective and communal. Right? See, when the Bible was written so long ago, there weren't individuals. Right? Even in the Old Testament, Right? There is no individuals. Even in the New Testament, you can see that the Bible is against individualism. We are a family. We are one body. We must help each other out. We must pray for one another. When people are suffering within your church, go up and comfort them. Try to talk to them. Don't shut them out. Don't act as if like <laughs> that what they're going through doesn't matter to you, right? We're all here for each other. Individualism is what America is suffering through right now. In our Western culture, we're nothing but individuals, right? We act as individuals. We're only concerned with ourselves, but we not, we don't see we don't seem to be concerned with others around us. America is getting further and further into it to an individualistic society. What we're seeing taking place in America is very scary. America needs to start praying. America needs to get itself back. God before it's too late. Our societies here in America need to wake up and stop being individualistic societies and start being more collective, more communal to help one another. Because when we work together, things get accomplished. When we work against each other and become individuals, we make everything about ourselves. Things tend to fall. A society cannot a society cannot keep going if it's individualistic. It will fall. A society is better when it's collective and communal, when it's helping everyone, when it's working together to accomplish simple tasks, right? Individuals cannot accomplish tasks, right? They just can't. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need a group of people. You can't do everything yourself. You can't even, it's hard to have your faith and be an individual, right? Because Jesus is not, was not an individual, right? He wasn't individualistic. If he was, the gospel wouldn't have spread like he did if, he, if it was all about individualism, which it wasn't. We have, to re, we have to realize that. Our mission is to continue to preach and teach God's word. We must imitate Christ in all we do. We must work together. No more individualism. Work together. That's all I have. I love you all so much. All right, back. I hope that made sense. Right? What the Bible is trying to say this morning. Right? We're all in this together. And America really is, America has become an individualistic society. I see it all the time. I see it every day, right? I see it when I see things not getting done for the homeless, right? Here in Eugene, Oregon, they seem to build a lot of parks, right? All, all we have are parks, right? And, do, and don't get me wrong, parks are nice. But why can't we build stuff for the homeless? Right? How many parks does one city need? 
do we have enough parks so people can walk their dogs, right? So kids can go play on playgrounds. So that's all nice. But what about the homeless? Where do they go, right? Everybody complains about the homeless, but does nothing to solve the problem, but yet complain. Individualistic societies do nothing but complain. They just do this, right? We're, we're so stringent in individualism. We build all these parks, but nothing for homeless, right? So I'm a little on a high horse right now, right? We have to stop being a, a individualistic, a individualistic society. Right? And that's all I have this morning. Right? I guess I'm gonna keep praying on what can be done for the homeless. Because each and every day I drive by a homeless and it breaks my heart. There's like nowhere for them to go. But yet we have plenty of places for people to walk their dogs, plenty of parks that are being built. These large sports complexes so people can play their sports, but nothing for homeless, right? I got a question to ask. What do you think Jesus would support? A big sports complex or something for the homeless to go so they can have a place to eat and to get out of this, the rain? Hmm? Which one do you think he would support? It's a question, right? I love you all so much, right? It's, I'll close out in prayer. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, he's wondering through divine secret words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. We don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. I'm going to blame his life and conduct without reproaching Christ our Lord. You are life, you need glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages, amen. Our Father, who art in heavens, have it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Endless ages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. I'm at Chair Wesley Campbell. Good morning, good day. JPCE Spiritual Talk. Never ever hold back. Right? Seek him. First thing you do, give him your heart. He does the rest. Right? Remember, you must be a family, a community. No more individualism. Right? There are people, there's people out there who are really in need. And their needs can't be met if we're stuck in an individualistic society only thinking about ourselves, right? We must get out there and get the work done. Love you all so much. I'm out.